During the Samsung event that revealed the Galaxy Note 10, there was a surprise that no one was really expecting. And honestly, it's probably the most exciting announcement for me personally and that's the Galaxy Book S. If you've been following the channel, you've heard of us talking about mobile chips getting big improvements year over year while Intel's been lagging behind and how Apple is paving the way to switch to their own CPUs and MacBooks. Well, now it's officially here, but Samsung beat them to the market with an ARM chip designed for a full OS instead of just being repurposed. And to be honest, it could give a lot of thin laptops, including MacBook Airs, a run for their money. Before we dive into performance and special features, along with one big disappointment, let's talk about the exterior. The laptop has a very simple design, which is a good thing, but it also has a curve by the hinge, which I think is a nice addition. The top and bottom look to be aluminum, but I'm uncertain about the palm rest. The keyboard is a low-profile chiclet design, and we also have a fingerprint scanner and a large trackpad. At the top, we have a 720p webcam, but unfortunately, no Windows Hello facial recognition. Overall, it is slightly thinner and smaller than the MacBook Air, and weighs just 2.1 pounds compared to 2.75 pounds. That may not sound like a big difference on paper, but if you remember the 12 inch Retina MacBook, which was two pounds, that felt much lighter than the MacBook Air. But of course, that only had one poor and really poor performance with thermal throttling. The Galaxy Book S will be much faster with a larger display and just slightly heavier. On the sides, we thankfully still have a headphone jack, unlike the Note 10, and two USB type C ports, which seem to be USB 3.1 Gen 2 for up to 1,250 megabytes per second bandwidth, and they can also support two 4K displays. On the bottom, we have a nano SIM and micro SD card combo slot with support for up to one terabyte SD cards. We've had LTE connected devices like iPads and smartwatches for years, so I've always wondered why laptops have been left out. But recently, we're starting to see this push, which is great for those who are on the go and need to be connected. On the inside, we have a 42 watt hour battery, which is smaller than the MacBook Air's 50, but the battery life is rated at a massive 23 hours of video playback compared to 13 hours on the Air. Of course, these numbers are usually overrated compared to the real world since brightness is usually turned down as well as other things. But even if it is within the 18 hour range, it will be very impressive. And I do think that's possible since at the heart of this machine, we have the Snapdragon 8CX, which is a seven watt chip. The i5 in the air is a dual core model where the 8CX is an eight core using four powerful cores and four power efficiency cores. During the reveal of the 8CX, Qualcomm compared it to an eighth gen 1.6 gigahertz quad core i5 that's available in many current Windows laptops and said that it was slightly faster while using much less power. Of course, we will be doing a bunch of tests when we get the Galaxy Book S in. By the way, make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on that. But at this time, there is very little performance info on the CPU and even less on the graphics. We do have some numbers from PCMark, which you guys can see right here. And we also found some tests for the MacBook Air. As you can see, the 8CX is a fair ways ahead. Realistically estimating the performance in Geekbench 4, it should get at least 12,000 in multi-core compared to 7,400 for the MacBook Air. Even though this laptop is fanless, throttling shouldn't be an issue like the Retina MacBook was due to the 8CX's efficient 7 nanometer design. On the graphics side, we have the Adreno 680, which is a more powerful version of the 640 and the Galaxy S10 and the Note 10. And compared to the Intel UHD 620 that's in that quad-core i5, the Adreno 680 is about 20% more powerful, meaning it should likely be at least 40% more powerful than the 617 in the MacBook Air, and there'll be an even bigger difference if you want to play some light games. Not only do we have great battery life and respectable performance, but the 8CX packs in a ton of other things into one chip. We have the same amazing X24 modem that's in the Galaxy S10 Plus and Note 10, which gave me much better speeds and reception than my iPhone XS Max, and along with that, we have the latest Wi-Fi chips and Bluetooth 5. One big benefit of using an ARM chip is the built-in hardware designed for specific tasks. For example, we have native H.265 and VP9 decoding and encoding, and it can even handle up to 4K 120 frames per second. Another selling point that is being marketed is the Galaxy Book S being an always-on design just like your phone phone, so you don't have to wait for it to start up. It should be instant. As for memory, we have 256 gigabytes of storage, which we will test the speeds of when we get it in, and 8 gigabytes of new LP DDR4 RAM, whereas Apple is still using LP DDR3, but that could be just an Intel restriction. Sound is another thing that I'm curious to test out. Samsung lists sound by AKG, which is a brand that they own, and it's also labeled as Dolby Atmos technology, but we've seen those labels on other machines where the speakers were fairly weak, whereas Apple always does a 
fantastic job with their speakers. Now I mentioned one disappointment with the system and that is the display. It's a 1080p panel which makes sense because they are focusing on battery life but what gets me is that it's labeled as a TFT display not an IPS. I read through a bunch of hands-on content and looked at some videos and no one mentioned the display quality for some weird reason. TFT panels typically have worse color accuracy and viewing angles, so that may be the biggest downside of this ultralight machine. The brightness was also not mentioned, so that's something that we will be taking a look at once we get it in. Overall, the Galaxy Book S looks like an intriguing laptop with a nice ultralight design and a usable amount of RAM and SSD in the base model. It starts at $999 compared to the $1299 for a similar spec MacBook Air, but with more performance and battery life. Of course, a huge selling point for MacBook buyers is macOS, so if you need that, no Windows alternative will steer you away. But for those open to Windows, this may be a great option. Let us know your thoughts on the Galaxy Book S down below, I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Thanks for watching this with Max with Max Tech. If you guys want to see our full review along with comparisons, make sure to hit that subscribe button above and enable those notifications down below. And if you're interested in seeing a couple more videos, you guys can check them out right over here. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.